Well, what's Ruby Tuesdays, my nieces and nephews? Welcome to Fun Uncle. I am your tour guide on this absolutely super califragilistic episode as we are discussing the price discovery in Bitcoin. New all time highs are in our future. If that sounds good to you, then stay tuned for the rest of this episode. Yes, yes, that is right and left, my nieces and nephews. Things are looking bullish. New all-time highs are in the future, and I mean, just look at the charts right now. This is incredible. We are just without resistance, it looks like, shooting up towards new all-time highs. And, you know, as to be expected, we are gonna do a little bit of a back and forth dance with previous all-time highs. These are gonna act as uh, resistance levels for a little while here, maybe up to a week, we will be bouncing off of these previous all-time highs. But it's like, as soon as we break through them, rocket boosters, you know what I'm saying? Like new all-time highs, uh, price discovery without resistance. And, and truly, when you look at it, it looks like we didn't have much resistance at all the last three weeks. It's just like, bam, 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 nothing but upward price growth, just just, just in, in an absolutely insane way. And actually, if you look at these candlesticks, these candlesticks here kind of resemble these candlesticks right here in, in a lot of ways. And so I'm just looking at this going like, okay, these are previous resistance levels. We've got to test them. We have to prove to everybody in the market, including the bears, and the bears are going to be the biggest problem. Those are the ones who are going to be doing the most selling off as we approach previous all-time highs. And we have to prove to everybody then no, Bitcoin is here to stay. Most people are hodling, they're diamond handing, they have 100K in their sites. I personally think it'll be a little bit less than that, maybe 80, 85,000 is gonna be the new level to look out for. But in the short term, all time highs is the only resistance level we have to face right now. And as soon as we just like crack through that glass ceiling, that glass ceiling on this guy <laughs> that's been holding us back, we're going to see new all-time highs in the craziest way, and we're gonna see more people flooding into the market than we ever have, and uh, it's just gonna be absolutely insane. So I'm just here to like encourage everybody. Yeah, we might see some short-term retracement here, but that's all par for the course. That's exactly what has to happen before we will break into new all-time highs. Now let's jump into some resources I like to use to triangulate this information. First off is crypto bubbles. It looks like kind of uniform growth. I mean, there's some, there's some clear losers, some clear winners. I like to narrow things down a little bit further. So I'm looking at just the ones that are available on uh, most marketplaces here. If it'll play with me. Oh, it's not gonna play with me. Ah, that's fine. Uh, I, I like to narrow things down with some of my favorites here that I've started off the side that are more readily available on most crypto exchanges. Come on, you're gonna do it, right? Yeah, nice, 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 nice. And so the clear winners here, Matic, Dot, Binance Coin. And the reason for that is that it's the money flow in crypto. As we all know, like money flows uh, into Bitcoin first and then it flows into our larger caps next. And uh, actually evidence of that, let's just go to Coin. 360 here. This is one of my favorite resources to use when just talking about how the money flows into crypto and it kind of does it as as like a giant wall of money. OK, so I want you to just imagine with me for a second that a big wall of money is coming towards Bitcoin, like just like a tsunami of money is coming towards the cryptocurrency markets and it's going to crash up against the markets just like this right here. A, a distribution is going to happen sort of like this where Almost 50% of it is going to go into Bitcoin. Looks like about 20, 30% of it's going to go into Ethereum and then so on and so forth. Just imagine a big flat wall crashes into this wall and this is how the distribution is going to lay out. And then once Bitcoin has had its run upwards, people have gained all their profit from Bitcoin, it'll then start to trickle down accordingly into these smaller cap coins, etc., etc., etc. And you'll know the bull run is starting to end whenever these little guys down here off in the corner start to see profit days, you know? And so that's starting to happen where these larger cap coins are starting to have their day in the sun. Bitcoin and Ethereum are kind of flat. I mean, Ethereum, Jesus. Ethereum has got to close the gap between Bitcoin, but, but Bitcoin is just generally flat today. Ethereum is generally flat. And we're going to start to see more green flow into these medium to smaller cap coins here in the short term. And that's how this is just going to play out. You know, we got to see 
uh, the money flow in this direction, and that'll be another confirmation that the bull market's actually taking place. And then once we've kind of have convinced all the bears, once we've started to convince new retail investors, and then most importantly, once we've convinced the institutional investors to get in, and that's why I think the Bitcoin ETF is gonna flip the script on us a little bit. Previously, the formula for Bitcoin was that uh, the weekends were more bullish and the weekdays were a little bit more bearish. Monday, Tuesday would be kind of bearish days, like we'd see a lot of dumpage when the markets, when the you know institutional markets opened up on Mondays and Tuesdays. And then Saturday and Sundays when the institutional markets are closed, people wanna make money, traders wanna trade. And the only game in town on the weekends is the cryptocurrency markets. And so, that's kind of, you know, ebb and flow of things. The weekends are good for crypto markets. Monday, Tuesdays, the weekdays are generally bad for the crypto markets. However, the ETF is an institutional money play. That means that institutional buyers are going to be more interested. We're going to see our price movement based off of institutional money. They play during the weekdays. And I think we're going to see a little bit of a script flip here on us. And, of, and this is a Sunday. And usually these are good days for the cryptocurrency markets. However, I'm seeing a lot of red right now on this Sunday. So I'm just putting together a hypothesis. Again, no one really knows what's going on. I want you to test my hypothesis. This video will ex exist on YouTube in perpetuity. If I'm wrong or I'm right, we're about to find out. But my guess is that we're just going to have to see uh, Monday play out. And, I, and if it's bullish, then that's what's happened. You know, the ETF play truly is the, the news and that's going to push things further up. And I think we, we, on that note, let's actually jump into the news. And just like I was saying, look at this crypto week at a glance, the upcom upcoming Bitcoin ETF to drive more adoption. Hex. Yeah, this is the big move we've been waiting for where the big money, people who are buying hundreds of millions to billions at a time are going to flood into the market. And this is just evidence of that right here. Economic times, no less. This isn't, you know, crypto butt plug, you know, ETF.io. No, this is the economic times. That means institutional money sees the same things we're seeing. They're finally catching on. They're finally playing along. They see the game that's going on. Let's see here. Bitcoin futures ETF coming could drive it to $85,000. See? So no, the, the uh, what's the way to describe it? The, uh, the moon boys, right? All those cryptocurrency social media enthusiasts you'll see tinkering around on the ticky talkies are saying 100,000 to like 130,000. I've ever heard crazy people say, 200,000 and $300,000 are still in play. Those are crazy people. Those are madmen. Those are absolutely uh, uh, crazy people who you shouldn't listen to. I think they're trying to um, convince a bunch of people to hold the bags. You know what I'm saying? Like to be holding bags, waiting for 100,000 when in actuality, people are planning to sell at 85,000. And so keep, keep an eye on it. Keep realistic expectations about where we're going next. If we were to hit $85,000 to go from 65, to $85,000, that's such a massive supersonic jump for Bitcoin. You, you would absolutely be elated if we made it to 85,000. So just keep that in mind, you know? Manage your expectations. If you are gonna trade this, not final financial advice, but if you are gonna trade this, just keep a level head and make sure that you are locking in profits uh, and not having pie in the sky dreams of tripling your money overnight, you know? Like, that dream has kind of passed for Bitcoin, I don't think anyone's gonna get a thousand X out of Bitcoin if that's the kind of move you're looking for. You're looking for sub 200 market cap coins. That's where there's maybe a hundred X to thousand X potential. But for the top 100, especially the top 25, you might be doubling your money. You might be tripling your money. It really depends on which play you've, you've bet on. For example, what I like to say is Bitcoin has an opportunity to double, right? Whereas Ethereum has an opportunity to triple. And then Cardano has an opportunity to quadruple to quint. Uh, maybe, maybe sextuple, right? And then we keep going down the list and, and, and see we're just chipping through the level and the market caps. You know, as we start to go down, you have a higher potential of doubling your money. So something to keep in mind, Bitcoin is more of a safe, safer bet, if you can even say that. It's kind of a safe bet right now. And Ethereum's a little bit safer, but with more upside. No, it's just as safe, maybe a little less safe, but with more upside potential. Um, 
man, it's just hard to, you know, I, not financial advice. I think I just, I'm just a fun uncle talking about something I love, which is cryptocurrency. Let's keep going. China cryptocurrency crackdown sees U.S. become the new global hub. Now, what I think is funny about this is that Bitcoin, if it succeeds, it's going to take down the current capitalist banking system. It's going to disrupt it in a really big way. And it's kind of funny to see that U.S., the big bank of big banks, you know, the money reserve of money reserves is now becoming the global hub for Bitcoin. It's very interesting. It makes you think that like, oh, okay, we're going to take it down from the inside. You know, <laughs> like we're going to take down the banks from the inside. Not that I'm has anything to do with it, but as a foot soldier in this, I feel like I'm playing some kind of frontline role, you know. I am the face of the Bitcoin movement in a very small way, like uh, I'm just encouraging everyone out there to do their own research, but to keep, you know, keep your eye on this, that Bitcoin is a serious player that's here to stay, it's an unstoppable force, and it's currently meeting an unmovable object, which is the U.S. capitalist system. And uh, it's kind of exciting. We're, we're living in, in the uprising. We're living through the transition period where all things will be different from here on out and cryptocurrency is leading the fight. I was just watching a TikTok the other day talking about how um, whenever Uber and Lyft came out, they did it in such a way that they couldn't be stopped. You know, like whenever, whenever it was starting to come about in California, um, the taxi companies weren't having it. They were throwing a hissy fit. They were telling regulators, you got to do something about this. And the regulators were like, well, it's too small right now. Like, we don't know what to do with it. It's just, you know, competition, really. But then Uber moved in such a way where they weren't making profits. They were just reinvesting in the company, spreading out like a virus all across the country, everywhere they could. And they got to the point where it was, it had filtrated into every facet of the US economy that the regulators had no other choice but to just make rules for it, that allowed it, that made space for it. And I think Bitcoin's doing the same thing. It's so fractionalized and so decentralized and it's got its legs and roots in so many different facets of industry, economy, retail investors, old money, new money, international, state governments. I mean, it's everywhere. It's like a virus. It's like cancer. And the regulators are going to have no other choice but just make room for them at the table. They're going to have to make a seat for them at the table because so many people were involved with it. It affects so many different Americans that they're really going to have no other choice. And that's the only path forward. And I love it that, you know, as much as people want to him and ha and the bears out there want to say all this negative stuff about it and, and all of the, um, like the Peter Shivs of the world or whoever that guy is who works for uh, um, uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Like the people of Berkshire Hathaway want nothing to do with Bitcoin. They think it's rat poison. But there will come a time when the people of Berkshire Hathaway have to sit at the table with the cryptocurrency elites and have to just swallow their words and sit there and play nice with an unstoppable force that has met an immovable object. And I just think that's hilarious impossible to run away from says zimbabwe's financial minister i agree with you it's impossible to run away and see here the el salvadorians are saying yes to bitcoin and increasingly exchange their savings for dollars oh it's savings in dollars for cryptocurrency that's huge and i think we're going to see more of that in first world countries it's starting i don't know if el salvador is a third world it's a second world country right you know and this is kind of trickle its way up to first world countries. And what's funny is bunches of Americans are already chipping in their money, <laughs> like are trading in their, their savings for Bitcoin as it is. And I just see that increasing. I saw that one in five Australians hold Bitcoin. I think it's about the same in America. It's about 20% of Americans, 40% uh, of the men or something like that. 40% of male millennials hold Bitcoin. And that number is just gonna keep increasing. And uh, what's sad about that is most people who hold Bitcoin are millennials. Millennials don't really have a lot of money who has all the money? Baby boomers. And so whenever we see this institutional play, the ETFs are coming into the market, that's gonna get more institutional buyers, which institutional buyers then convince the baby boomers to buy in. And once we get the baby boomers to buy into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies at mass, that's when we see supersonic new all-time highs that are just unstoppable. 
Uh, and so I think with that, let's jump into the Lad City Lounge, people. That's right, everybody. Welcome to the Lad City Lounge. I want you to kick up your feet, grab a glass of whiskey, a bottle of wine, I don't care, whatever your vice is. Join your neighborhood Lad City fun uncle in the Lad City Lounge. We are talking about all things Lad City. And most importantly, it's the Lad of the Week. I like to start the segment off by uh, promoting one of the members of Lad City who has been the most Lad, Lad City Lad. And this week, the winner of that prize is Asmodai. Asmodai, you are our Lad City Lad of the Week. Thank you so much for being such a fun participant in the Lad City Network. You were there for every show, you were commenting, you were encouraging people, you are the change we all wanna see in the world. And so thank you so much for being such a fun contributing member of Lad City and the Lad City Network. So cheers to you. I'm gonna airdrop you some tokens in the Discord. You've earned them, bud. Thank you so much. And I think everybody should uh, take note of how Asmodai plays in the Lad City, you know? Like, he is a very encouraging person who is there for every single one of the events, just chatting it up in, in the Discord chat. And uh, for those of you out there who want to be the Lad City Lad of the Week, just do what Asmodai did. Just follow his, his template, you know? Like, <laughs> he's doing it right, and he has uh, been an unsung hero that I should have promoted sooner then I have uh, it's just a long list of lads I got to encourage, and you are the next one on the list. So thank you so much, Asmodai. You are a Lad City Lad of the Week. And every week, I will be going through the Discord, kind of lurking, kind of just being an uncle, you know, <laughs> watching people participate in Lad City. And I'll be making note of who was the most Lad Lad of the Week. And I will give you a shout out on the show. I'll throw you some tokens in the Discord. And for those of you who are not a member of the Discord, you gotta jump in. You've obviously know where the YouTube page is because you're watching this video, but the Discord, that's really where you wanna go. You want to go to your browser, type in ladz.city into your browser right now. It'll take you to the terminal and you will find a link to our Discord. Jump into the Discord, join us. It is chocked full of like-minded cryptocurrency enthusiasts just like yourself. You're gonna wanna be in there. We're doing lads token drops every single, uh, almost every single day. And then we've got uh, NFT drops that we're doing for our nobles uh, almost on a weekly basis and that's increasing. And of course, the YouTube page, the hub of it all, where we are releasing content with our content creators every single day of the week. And on Saturdays, we have finally filled the spot. Saturday was our only empty spot of the week and it is finally filled. You can see it in the YouTube down below, Art Start Now's first episode ever aired on the Lad City Network. And I want you to check out a promo for it right here. What's really good, y'all? It's your boy, Gif. I'm not hungover. You're hungover, and I'm hanging out here with the Nifty Castle crew, Woe with Menthol, and Woe Boy on the Lad City Network. Every Saturday, 2 p.m. Pacific time, the Nifty Castle crash lands inside the walls of the Lad City, y'all. It's art start now. Come chill. Don't get rugged. LFG. Art start. I'm Lola Menthol, and this is Woe Boy, and he's gonna tell you about how he feels. <laughs> <laughs> Look what he did! <laughs> did he unplug his whole computer? This is hilarious! <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's Art Start Now, a new show here on the Lad City Network. Uh, they are an absolute blast. It's kind of effortless doing these shows with them because they are just on, they bring topics, they're funny, they're witty, and they have their finger on the NFT pulse. And so check out that new show, Saturdays, 
on the Lad City Network. Uh, it's a blast. It's absolutely fun. And here is the Discord, guys. This is it, the one-stop shop for all things Lad City. You're going to want to check it out. This is just fun. You know, like we, we've got over 3,000 members active as I'm recording this. Almost 800 people, 700 people here are here just chatting it up in the Discord. We are talking about NFTs, cryptocurrencies, alpha drops, you name it here in the Discord. This is where you're going to want to be. Join us and hit me up in the Discord. I love chatting with you guys. Send me a DM. I'll tell you what's up. And if you're the most encouraging member of the Lad City Network, I will give you a shout out on this show and airdrop you some Lad City tokens. So please join us in the Discord. Join us in Lad City. It's hip, it's hopping, and it's now, it's here, it's a stay, and it ain't going anywhere. Speaking of which, Halloween is just around the corner, and your old neighborhood fun, fun uncle <laughs> will be on a Halloween episode with the Undead Punks. You're going to want to check this out, a Discord Halloween special. We're going to have a bunch of people coming on. DJ Alex Von Martin is hosted by me and Scourge. We're going to have some Undead Punk giveaways. That's going to happen 9 p.m. BST. This is British time, so that's 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It'll be a British show. They're having this old chap, this old wanker come on. This old yank's going to come on this British show and, and chimney sweep and jolly old silver. I, I'm from America. I don't know what I'm talking about. Biscuits and gravy, right? Beans and pies. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. God save the queen, right? But anyways, it's going to be a Undead Punks Halloween episode. We are going to be giving away Undead Punks during this show. That's 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Halloween. You're not going to want to miss that. If you guys like NFTs and you like me and you like British people and you like DJs and you like Halloween, have I sold it? Have I sold it enough? Come on, guys. You're going to want to check this out. And uh, that's my last piece of Lad City news. Without further ado, let's head on into my top five altcoins to watch. That's right, I love doing it, and you guys keep asking for it. That's the top five altcoins to watch. And before I jump into that, let's talk about the money flow in crypto one more time. As I said previously in the episode, money goes from fiat into Bitcoin and then into large cap, mid caps, and low caps. Now in recent weeks, if you'll see over here in the chart, we have had markets explode for Bitcoin and Ethereum into the large caps. So things have been rocketing up as most of the market has been kind of generally flattish, right, over the last couple weeks. And so now it's time for that money to flow from Bitcoin into larger cap coins. These are all hints I'm laying out for my top five coins to watch this week. And we're gonna start with number five, which is a large cap coin. Wink, wink, again, this is not financial advice, but my number five coin to watch this week is none other than Terra Luna. Oh my gosh, this is a top 12 coin. It's got a substantial market cap, but with room to grow. You know, Bitcoin itself is a trillion dollars, so this has serious room to grow upwards. It's down in recent weeks, and uh, I think this is an awesome buying opportunity for this coin. I'm not the only one who thinks so. Over 160 projects will launch on Terra early next year. The sky is the limit. Things have only just begun for this cryptocurrency. And that's why it's my number five pick this week. It's got a large cap to it. It has got a lot of promise to it. And the way money is flowing currently in the markets, we have, we have plenty of reason to believe that these profits from Bitcoin will now trickle down into the rest of the market. And Terra Luna will be my number five pick <laughs> to see the, maybe the fifth most of that money. But without further ado, let's keep going. Let's keep diving through these into my number four pick, which is... Chainlink, a large cap. This is rank 17, 26 billion market cap, serious room to grow, and a lot of promise. Like the other ones, flat, down 5% actually in the last 24 hours. I think this is an awesome buying opportunity. Some serious upward trajectory. Look, it could go 90% up from here. So what, what do we got? Currently the price is sitting around $27. It says it could go to 41 Oh my God, if that's not enough sales pitch for you, I don't know what to tell you guys. It's got a lot of promise, a lot of people behind it. Um, and uh, look at this, 
a 90% gain is in the future, that's if the money flow goes the way it usually does. And uh, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. And so I think the rhyming word for this week is me, midi, mi, large to medium cap coins are going to see Bitcoin's profit in the short term. What a rhyme that was, but uh, <laughs> I'm not a singer, I'm just a talker. Uh, the number three pick is Polkadot. All systems are go. Oh my gosh. Rank eight. So it's higher up on the list. That's why it's higher up on my list because I think it will see profits before Chainlink or Terra Luna will. And I think it's a serious player. It's got um, a lot of backing. It's currently down like the others. I'm just going to rinse and repeat, say the same things I have with the others. This is a coin that is going to see the trickle down economics from Bitcoin. And let's see what the news has to say about $75. Okay. Okay. So we're currently sitting at 41. That is almost a 2x gain as the price rally sets up for a classic bullish reversal. This is huge, you guys. So do not sleep on Polkadot. It is currently ranked. Where is it on the list? Eight. Oh my gosh. So of course, once Bitcoin, once Ethereum, once XRP, once they all get their profits, the money will trickle down into Polkadot, into Chainlink, into Terra Luna. But let's not forget my number two pick, which is Cardano. I mean, did I have to say it? Were you guys all thinking it already? Like, where was Cardano, dude? It's number four. It's number four, guys. And so, yeah, that's exactly how this is going to play out. The market is going to flow into Bitcoin, then into Ethereum, and then it's going to trickle down to Binance Coin, and then trickle down into Cardano, etc. Then we've got Polkadot, then we've got Terra Luna, uh, we've got Chainlink. Um, I mean, like, it, I just see upward momentum in a serious way uh, with all of these coins, and Cardano is next. It's number four. It's down right now. It's down in recent weeks as well. Look at the red. Look at the red here. Awesome buying opportunity, and I'm not the only one to think so. You know I'm going to show a news article about how Cardano is set to explode to $4. So we're currently sitting at about $220. Okay, so we could see almost a 2x, maybe even a $245. That would be a full-on 2x from here. If you guys like making money, maybe you should sprinkle, dingle, tinkle a little bit of money into Cardano because wowie, wee wow, it's doing very well. And I see it doing extraordinarily well from here. And it's just been kind of stagnant in recent weeks. I think it's just a matter of time. And uh, for those of you who were already sitting in altcoins and you're having FOMO right now as Bitcoin and Ethereum are shooting up, just wait. Don't panic, sell at a loss. Just wait because the money flow will move down into your Cardano positions for those of you already hodling. And for those of you who don't have a Cardano position, I would encourage you to get some. Diversify some of your profits into Cardano because these lower cap, I mean, shoot, this is a large cap coin. Cardano will see its day in the sunlight. It will have its 20% week and we will all be like, okay, what a sigh of relief. We're all finally in the profit. Let's scrape a little bit of our Cardano money off the top and then go into medium and lower cap coins. And that will segue me kind of seamlessly to my number one coin here, which is a low cap coin, a super low cap coin. It is lossless, is ranked 806. It has a fully diluted market cap of almost $100 million. This is one of those coins that I see continued parabolic upward trajectory from this because everyone's talking about it. People on social media are shilling this coin. It's got a lot of serious institutional backing and it's got nowhere but up from here, guys. I mean, my other coins were in the, into the billions, into the tens of billions. This isn't even into the hundreds of millions yet. And so I see this having some serious upside potential to it as the money flow continues again. So, Bitcoin, Bitcoin to Ethereum, Ethereum to Cardano, Cardano, Cardano down to Polkadot, Polkadot to Chainlink, Terra, right? And then once our top 100 see their profits, the money continues to flow down into medium and to lower cap coins. And this is my low cap gym. You got to watch. You got to keep your eye on this bad boy because it is going to do upward rocket launches here in the short term. It only needs a little bit of those profits to see some serious gain. 
100 million dollars in the cryptocurrency market is not a lot of money and so this could double this could triple without even flinching lossless secures partnership to improve token safety measures it's a security play here in the cryptocurrency space and you guys know how important security is uh, especially in this fully digital day and age this could put an end to DeFi hacks huge if this doesn't sell you on it alone I don't know what I don't know what else to tell you guys it's super low cap people are releasing articles like this saying it could put an end to DeFi hacks lossless is the future this is the play you want to be a part of especially if you don't like getting hacked do you guys like getting hacked I certainly don't like getting hacked so without further ado these were my top five coins to watch. Let me rocket through them in reverse for you. My number one coin was Lossless, ranked 100, 806. Oh my God, it's so, so much upside potential. This is why my number one coin for you guys to watch. My number two, Cardano. I mean, no brainer. Once Ethereum and Bitcoin finally have their time in the sun, this one will play in the playground as well. So jump in if you haven't already. Number three, Polkadot. Wow, just the same thing. We are just following the money flow downwards with this list, you know? So from Cardano, we will go into Polkadot. From Polkadot, we're going into Chainlink. From Chainlink, we are then trickling into Terra Luna. Well, that's the whole bag of potatoes, my nieces and nephews. Thanks for staying tuned with me in this episode. Uh, I'm having like some nasal problems. So my mouth is like totally dry, like crazy. I'm having the hardest time holding the, get, holding the conversation for an extended period of time. So thanks so much for staying tuned with me. They're all, not, not all gonna be winners. And so I had one hell of a week. We did Art Start Now on Saturday and then I, had, I did co-hosted NFT Live on Friday. So I am on a marathon right now. I'm kind of amazed I made it this far. So uh, thank you so much for sticking with me. My super fans out there who watch every week, you are incredible. Um, join the Lad City Network if you haven't already. It's super fun. People there are just really encouraging and they're fun and, and uh, they lift me up whenever I'm feeling down and, and then they keep encouraging me when things are great. And I don't know, it's just a cool community to be a part of and I'm just glad they needed an uncle. And here I am stopping by every Sunday around 1 p.m. on the Lad City Network. You can catch me here, maybe on better days when I'm not feeling so sick and down in the weather. Uh, I just wanna, on closing, you know, show you one last time the money flow in crypto. Just keep this in mind that it has now moved into Bitcoin. And now from Bitcoin, we're gonna go to large cap, mid cap, low caps, the shit coins, right? My lossless pick as number one. Low cap coin is ranked 800, keep an eye out for that. But that's just how the money flows. That's how things go. I'm expecting Monday to be maybe a rather bullish day for cryptocurrencies, backed on that ETF news as institutional buyers show up. And actually, if anything, I would be rather concerned if Monday isn't a bullish day. You know, if Monday ends up being a dumpy day, then that means the ETF news wasn't as big as we thought it was. And maybe, you know, new all-time highs aren't in the future. And so I would have to change a lot of my strategy if we have a red week coming up here. So keep an eye out for the week. Watch those medium to low cap coins and make sure you join the Lad City Network if you haven't already, super fun group of people. Uh, without further ado, I am the neighborhood fun uncle here in Lad City, thanks for stopping by, and you can catch me on Art Start Now, Saturdays at one, and on Fun Uncle Sundays at one. I'm working all week, seven days a week over here at <laughs> Fun Uncle's place, man. Uh, maybe I'll catch up on some sleep tonight, who knows? Uh, depends on if the Seahawks win tonight then no sleep for this fun uncle. But other than that, thanks so much. Have a great week and stay crypto, everybody.